to all you guys watching either on Facebook or out there in the land of YouTube. My name is Brandon Wallace and I own Outlaw Innovations. We do custom work of any type you can imagine, but mainly specialize in either the Western firearms or Western firearms sports with gear and apparel as well as custom tuning. On this channel, we're going to go through a lot of neat stuff. Everything from firearms reviews, gunsmithing, and maybe a little leather work. I'm kidding. There's going to be a good amount of leather work. Artwork tutorials. Basically showing you how I do the things that I do. I also want to cover, beyond just those type of tutorials, another thing that really interests me as a person and as a gun owner. A firearms enthusiast. It's my favorite art form in the world. It's called the art of gunsmithing. First things first. Before pointing this weapon at anybody, and you noticed I didn't point it towards the camera at all, there's a point to that. I'm going to show both you and myself that this is an unloaded firearm. That is critically important. With me, if I sit there and take, put this weapon down, I don't care if it's 10 seconds. I don't even care if I don't turn my back to it. As soon as it leaves my hand, I assume automatically that it's loaded. So I take it. It takes nothing at all to check that. Those little extra checks and balances can really, really make the difference between you pursuing this art and enjoying it or reading about you in the newspaper because you didn't follow the rules to this. You didn't follow, I can't exactly say the rules of safe gun handling because as far as I know, this breaks four out of the six right off the top of my head. But you can help mitigate that just by checking to see if it's unloaded. What is gun spinning? Well, it is a Western art form that started, oh, if I had to take a guess, I'd say 1850s, 1860s. Where it got popular, though, was through Buffalo Bills, Pawnee Bills, Wild West shows, and other touring acts of the day. At that point in time, the Wild West, as portrayed through dime novels, everything else that a person back east or overseas could read, really painted it as a nostalgic, very nostalgic, very romantic era. Fact is, in dime novels, they were much more fiction and embellishment than actual true fact. Where did it really kind of get its start? I know a lot of cowboys. I've, I've known many throughout my life. Real cowboys. Back then, they didn't have social networking. They didn't have anything that played music for them. If you were out on the trail... You were doing these type of things. You worked all day. During the evening times, you ate. You wound down a little bit. You might have a nip or two of whatever booze they had with them because they would carry a little bit, if nothing else, then to claim medicinal. However, if you got drunk, you couldn't do your job. So, the idealized thing that Hollywood has portrayed now is bunch of drunk cowboys sitting around with a load of weapons and doing all this good stuff didn't happen. Just as we are now, back then, people didn't take too kindly to having a loaded weapon pulled on. Didn't go very well. The scenes that you see in Hollywood movies where people were going and doing this all the time in saloons, in different other various things that they would, you know, venues that they portray this as happening, didn't happen. Some, I'm sure, small, obscure towns that did not have do not open carry carry firearms at all in city limits jurisdiction guidelines. Sure, maybe. I don't know. I wasn't there. What I do know is that back then, most city ordinances were posted outside of town, and you either had to check your firearms with law enforcement that was there, and you'd get a tag, you bring the tag back when you're ready to leave town, and you get your weapons back, you get your belt back, all, all that, anything you had to check. Well, if you were carrying 
which most of them still did. Usually, it was a pocket pistol. Something that you could hide easy. Because if you came in anywhere, disregarding that order, that is strapped to your hip, much less taking it out and playing with it with a whole bunch of people. It's a very good chance the sheriff or deputy was going to come along and give you one of those. Put you sleep for a little while. In the morning, you wake up at the crossbar hotel and you'd have some explaining to do. Well, that, of course, probably happened a few times, but it wasn't the norm. It wasn't the norm at all. Other Hollywood myths, they make it look like this is how you survive a gunfight and how they did it. You've got people squaring off in the street. It's high noon or whatever location they're in. They wait for it. And didn't happen. Your old West gunslingers, almost all of them, didn't die that way. They were generally shot right here in the back, back of the head. Just like today, if somebody has the intent to do you harm, are they going to come up and let you know? Are they going to call you out and give you the time to do whatever you need to do? Be it phone a friend, anything else you need, or go grab a bigger weapon. No. They don't do it now, and they didn't do it back then. This is not, has not ever been, nor will ever be, martial art. Flash forward, 1950s. You had major directors now, and a few Hollywood gun coaches. Right now, I'm going to leave their names out. I'd like you to do a little research on yourself if you're really interested in history. Those guys are the ones that trained your Hollywood actors in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. In the 50s, you had an explosion in the art of fast run in multiple competitions. The way that one would start is the way most things really don't. Most things have grassroots movements, and they grow up. This one started with your Hollywood stars and worked its way down. In this series, I'm going to show you, as the best of my ability allows, how to do what I do. I am by far not the best. Do a search on YouTube, and you will come up with people that are much more accomplished, and make a better show than I do. I think this, of course, while not being for everybody, will be for some. This right here helps me out immensely when I run into any frustration or anything that aggravates me. Things when I'm gunsmithing that I just can't think through right then and I have to step out of my box. That's actually how I started this. I actually started this with an old RG-22 that I had no money in and wasn't worried about hurting it. I pushed myself away by gunsmith the table and walked full. Just doing this. Until I could do this. And then that. And then this. It helped me in multiple ways. Number one, it cleared my mind. And I could think through other things. And two, once I really started exploring it, I found that I, I enjoyed it. I wanted to know more about it. I wanted to know the history of it. But even more than that, I wanted to learn how to do the things that I could look up, that I could see. But I'm like with most things, this information just wasn't out there. There are videos that say Gunspinning 101, Intro to Gunspinning, and things like that. But that's all that is. Yes, knowing what this is called, knowing what this is called, is, is, whatever it is. Yeah, that might be important to you. But I wanted to learn the fine mechanics that would allow me to be able to do what I saw in these videos by these really impressive performing artists. So, if you like this, 
it seems like that is a good idea to you, you want to try it. Please, watch the rest of my videos. I will be putting out as many as I need in the series, really, to cover everything. I will also be offering, through a uh, internet program that allows me to basically do clinics, online gun spinning clinics, for those of you who are really interested. And I will post that information here on my next video. Till then, my name's Brandon Wallace with Outlaw Innovations. You guys stay safe. Have a good day.